What's going on everybody? I'm Jack and as the title and thumbnail say, we are going to go through a full day of eating 1600 calories as well as hitting 160 grams of protein. But I figured what better way to launch the cookbook with a full day of eating 1600 calories with recipes from that cookbook to help you hit a high protein, low calorie full day of eating. So first things first, we're going to have our first meal, which is going to be our egg white bites. I'll actually read the ingredients directly from the cookbook recipe itself. So I'll, put, I'll actually throw some stuff on the screen, but you guys can basically see what the cookbook's gonna look like as far as each recipe. It has the nutritional facts, the ingredients, the directions, some tips, uh, the KISS level, which I'll explain later on, uh, but it's basically the ranking level of how hard a meal might be to make. But this is gonna be a KISS level one. I mean, it's an easy recipe. It is gonna be our egg white bites. So as you can see here, we got our egg whites, but the ingredients for the recipe are gonna be 150 grams of bell pepper. So that's gonna be about one pepper cut up. It's also gonna be 45 grams of mushrooms. We have our, our white mushrooms right here. Also 30 grams of spinach. We also need 400 grams of egg whites or egg beaters. We have both of them right here. They have the exact same macros, pretty much pure protein. Each one, let's see, is 25 calories per serving um, and 20 servings per container, as well as being five grams of protein per serving. So pretty much pure protein right there. We need 400 grams of either one or you can use a mixture. I don't know if that would help you or any way, but feel free to use a mixture if you want. And then we need also 28 grams of reduced fat shredded cheese. I use the uh, Mexican blend from Kroger, but any reduced fat shredded cheese should work. We need one serving or 28 grams of that. We also need some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I say one teaspoon of each, as well as a little bit of nonstick spray. This just happens to be, um, let's see, extra virgin olive oil spray, but any sort of nonstick spray will work. But those are the ingredients read directly from the actual recipe itself, but we're gonna go ahead, we have our oven preheating at 375 degrees. First thing we need to do is go ahead and cut up our veggies. So we're gonna cut up our bell pepper, our mushrooms, and our spinach. We're gonna measure out the exact amount using a digital scale, so highly recommend picking up a digital scale. A lot of the recipes in the cookbook use grams rather than like cups and teaspoons, just because a digital scale is a little more accurate. I think it's pretty easy just to throw a bowl on there, measure things out, and go from there. But yeah, first thing we're gonna do, go ahead, cut up all our vegetables, get those in the pan. We will be using all 12 muffin holes or muffin tin, I don't know, muffin holes, I guess you would call them. Um, but yes, that is gonna be two servings of, of the recipe. I will be eating all 12 just because I do need um, basically a bigger volume as well as some more protein. But first things first, let's go ahead and cut up our vegetables. And with the magic of editing, we have all our vegetables cut up. We have 100, I think it come out to be 155 grams of bell pepper, but I'm not gonna be too picky. Vegetables are so low calorie that five grams here or there is not gonna make a difference. But we did measure out exactly 45 grams of mushrooms and 30 grams of spinach. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and hit our tin, um, our, gosh, I don't know why I keep messing this up. Muffin tin, um, each muffin tin whole. I know that's probably the wrong word, but we're gonna roll with it. Uh, with a little bit of nonstick, so this is just like I mentioned, olive oil spray. Nothing too crazy right here. Okay, now that we have our actual nonstick here, we're gonna go ahead and add our ingredients into the pan itself. I like to evenly distribute, but if you wanted to maybe have like three spinach, three mushroom, and then um, six pepper, you could do that, but I like to sprinkle in a little bit into each. Next, we'll go ahead and pour our egg whites or egg beaters in, either one. This is unopened and I have egg beaters open, so we're gonna use the egg beaters themselves. So give that a good shake, um, just to mix it up a little bit. Then what we'll do is go ahead, place that on your digital scale and zero it out so it says zero. And then when you remove it, whatever you pour, so I'll pour a little bit into that guy. Boom, put it back on the scale and it'll read how much you've dispensed. So we wanna dispense 400 grams. I just dispensed 40 uh, right there. We'll continue that process when we have all the muffin holes uh, filled. Okay, we went over a bit. It says 408, but not a huge deal. Once again, a few grams here, there are not gonna be a big deal, especially with some things low calorie as vegetables and egg whites. But the next we need to do is our cheese. The cheese we are gonna be a little bit more accurate with just because it has a little bit more calories. We want exactly 28 grams for one serving. Same thing, I like to put it on the scale, zero it out. I like to like pull a handful of cheese. Let's see. And that is 29 grams, so pretty much perfect. And I basically just sprinkle the cheese right on top. Make sure each one gets a little bit. And also don't be too concerned if the egg whites don't fill up to the brim, because it will expand as they cook. We don't want things to overflow. Like this one, the corner, I don't know if you guys can see that right now, but there's one in the corner that's pretty much at the very top and that's a little bit too much. We want to be just maybe I would say about a quarter inch below the top so they can have room to expand up. And the last thing we're gonna add a little bit of, like I mentioned, some garlic powder, salt and pepper on top. And then we'll give each one one last mix. 
Alrighty, now all of our egg holes are filled. We can, you can see that right there. I don't want to twist it too much because that one right there in the corner is a little bit overfilled. Like I said, a good one would kind of be like, yeah, these three right here. You can barely see maybe like a quarter inch so they have room to rise. That one was overfilled. But yeah, otherwise we're gonna go ahead and put this in the oven now at uh, 375. It has now preheated, our oven has, for 20 to 25 minutes. And as always, use your time in the oven to clean up your kitchen so when it's done, everything's nice and clean. All right, and for me, it took exactly 22 minutes. I pulled these out and they're pretty much perfect. As you can see, it's a nice golden brown. They're all cooked all the way through. But now we'll go ahead and leave this for about, I would say two to three minutes, let it cool down and then remove the egg whites themselves. But yeah, we're gonna let those cool down for a little bit and I'll go over the macros and that's gonna be my breakfast. And here we go with the final product, all 12 egg white bites. Also ignore the two water bottles, the gym I go to while the pipes burst and they don't have water right now. So I have to bring like basically a full gallon of water with me um, to the gym. But also a quick thing, I try to make the cookbook as simple as possible. So the name of the cookbook is actually Chef's Kiss, K dot I dot S dot S dot. And it's an abbreviation for keep it stupid simple. I'm not trying to make things complicated. I'm not trying to make you go to the store, buy 15,000 ingredients, take five hours to cook one single recipe. I'm not trying to make things complicated. I'm not using any special techniques. I'm just a guy that likes to eat high protein, low calorie meals, and then I want to put them in a cookbook and share them with you. So I have made this before on the channel. Um, basically, a lot of people have made, remade it and they said it's one of their favorite, but they can't eat that all this because it's so much food, and it is. So I've actually made the cookbook. I made serving sizes. So this technically is two servings. So the cookbook actually comes out to say six egg white bites is one single serving but I personally would eat all 12 just because um, I can eat that volume I'm used to eating a lot of food and for me this is just basically a, a giant protein bomb and the macros for this are gonna be six grams of fat 10 grams of carbs 54 yes 54 grams of protein and 310 calories so if you were to split that in half and use like one serving or six egg white bites if you um, don't need this amount of volume in the morning or just can't finish them six egg white bites would be obviously three grams of fat five grams of carbs quick math, 27 grams of protein, and then 155 calories in total. And I highly recommend getting a lot of protein in your first meal of the day. It makes dieting and weight loss a lot easier to have a high protein meal and low calories in the morning. Basically a good way to set you up to get ahead for the day. Also, what I was gonna mention is these little guys are some silicone uh, muffin tin um, liners or muffin tin liners, something like that. No, you do not need these. Um, you can go ahead and use a, a regular tin just like I do, spray it with olive oil. You will have to cut them out a little bit, um, but it's still pretty easy. I mean, I, it literally took me maybe a minute to cut all these out, but you can use these guys too, which are super convenient. Um, I use these for my muffins um, recipes a lot too, but you can also throw your egg white bites in here, just a little bit easier for cleanup and stuff like that. But once again, not an essential, you can still do it in a regular tin. And all my recipes, as I said, are super simple. The Kiss Scale is also what I use for all my recipes. I'll throw one up now, basically level one, two, three, um, basically easy, medium, hard. Easy is pretty much foolproof. I mean, there's no cooking techniques. Um, basically, you, there's no special cooking techniques. Basically, you preheat your oven, um, and then you pretty much just go from there. Super simple, um, not too many ingredients, not anything special. I would say KISS level two is a little bit more ingredients, maybe one or two cooking techniques beyond just air fryer or oven or pan. You might have to use one or two cooking methods. And then level three is a little complicated, but still once again, if I can do it and I'm a rookie and amateur chef at best, um, you can still do it, but level three definitely takes a little bit more accuracy, so it's mostly for baking. Like my carrot cake is definitely level three because it has a lot of different ingredients and you need to make sure everything's correct for it to bake properly. And then things like a little bit more complicated, we have like three or four techniques, maybe 10 plus ingredients, but there's only a few level threes in that whole entire cookbook and I still have confidence that you guys can make those. But without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and dig into these. Another thing I actually wrote in the cookbook, I have a little tip section. If you wanna add a little bit of hot sauce, salsa, your favorite like ketchup, your favorite sauce or whatever on here, Feel free to do so. I did not include sauces in the actual macros, but feel free to add a little ketchup, hot sauce, whatever it is. But without further ado, I need to go work out, but we're gonna feed a little bit to Maisie. So let's break off a little piece right here. Cause protein's good for dogs too. Let's see how she can catch. Right here, sit, stay. All right, you guys see her back there? All right, so we got a little piece of egg. Make sure it's focused on her. Ready? Nice, let's go. Good catch. All right, I'll see you guys at lunch. 
We're back from our workout and now it is time for a little bit of a protein bomb after our workout as well. Once again, the theme of the day is we high protein, low calorie. We're gonna go with some chicken breast. We're gonna be making a chicken bacon ranch sandwich. So we have some chicken breast right here. We also have this low calorie bread. This is the Sara Lee Delight 45 calorie bread, like right there like that. Uh, this is kind of my go-to. I think they also make like a 40 calorie sliced bread. I think I saw it at the store, but I don't know why, but I really like this multi-grain 45 calorie slice. I think it's perfect. We also have some bacon. This is not special bacon. This is microwave bacon. We keep things simple. I'm not trying to overcomplicate it. We don't need any more pans, more dishes. You know, pop these bad boys in the microwave. It is, let's see, two slices gets you 60 calories. I'm sure they have different variations. Three for 70, two for 80, whatever it is. Choose the bacon you enjoy and what you have on hand. It will change the macros just slightly, but once again, uh, bacon's bacon. It might have a little bit more fat content, a little bit higher protein, whatever it is. You can use turkey bacon if you really want to, but we already have the chicken breast, so we don't need much more. Also, we have a little bit of lettuce. You can go with lettuce, spinach, whatever it is, up to you. And then we also have our fat-free ranch right here. I always love Hidden Valley, so we're going with Hidden Valley, but any fat-free ranch works. Once again, we're gonna pull up the cookbook and literally read directly from there in terms of the actual ingredients. So let's see here. So we need 150 grams of chicken breast, that's gonna be raw. We need uh, seasonings of choice. I always go with Famous Dave's. Um, this is pretty much, I find at any Kroger, I'm also seeing at Walmart, uh, Famous Dave's chicken rub, but essentially it is a combination of paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, chili flakes, salt, and pepper. So if you don't have the actual mixture, you can mix up some of those. We also need two slices of bacon. As I mentioned, we're going with the microwave ready. You could also use center cut bacon, I think thicker than that, whatever. It will change the macros slightly. Then we need two leaves of lettuce, or about 20 grams. So we're going with the shredded lettuce today, but if you have like a heart of lettuce or a head of lettuce, you can have about two slices of lettuce. Then we also need 15 grams of our fat-free ranch right here. Boom, that guy right there, that's gonna be half a serving. Then we also need two slices of our low-calorie bread. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and we're gonna cook this in the air fryer. You can also cook it in the oven or on the stove top, either one works. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and measure out our chicken. We want 150 grams raw. We'll throw our seasoning, give it a nice coating, put it in the air fryer and cook it at 365 for 12 minutes. We'll also throw a little nonstick down in the actual air fryer. Boom. Put our chicken in there, make sure it's nice and even. Now we're gonna throw this guy in the air fryer, as I mentioned, 12 minutes at 365, flip it halfway. Our chicken's done cooking, but while it cools off, we'll go ahead and toast our bread, as well as cook up our bacon. For, as far as bacon goes, I know everyone has their preferences, how they want it crispy, they want it soft and chewy, whatever it is. I personally like mine pretty much right down the middle. A little bit crispy, but also not burnt whatsoever. Oh, there we go. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and cook this. Let's see if we got instructions on here. Uh, two slices, it's gonna take 20 seconds for less crispy, 25 for more crispy. I personally go 20 seconds, two slices right here. And as I mentioned, 60 calories for two slices. All right, now we have all of our ingredients. Hopefully you guys can see me. Let's turn the hat around so the shadow isn't so bad. Uh, we got our bacon over here, two slices of bacon. Boom, that covers that. We got our chicken breast, which should be cooled off by now. Let's see, okay, it is awesome. We got our lettuce. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and measure out our lettuce. Uh, I pretty much always use a scale the same way. I'll put the ingredient I want on the scale, zero it out, and then pull out the amount of the ingredient I want. So let's go do that real quick. Basically a little bit of a barrier and kind of like a pillow for the chicken to sit on. We got our chicken breast, boom, right there. Kind of looks like a Chick-fil-A chicken breast. It's like a heart shape right there, awesome. Then I personally like to go bacon, um, then our ranch, so I'll do that. So we got our two slices of bacon right here, got a little bit of our ranch as well. 15 grams, perfect. We got that on there. We'll go ahead and top it with our second piece of bread. Get a quick push. And I'm gonna cut it in half just so we can kind of get like a, basically a cross section. But real quick, I'll show you guys a cross section. See that nice, juicy chicken breast right there, steaming. We got our bacon, lettuce, ranch. Boom. Whoops. Our other sandwich is kind of falling apart, I'll admit. It isn't the, um, I would say, not the stickiest sandwich, the well put together, but hey, it gets the job done, right? All right, now we'll give a quick taste test and then go over the macros. Let's just go right down the middle right here. In my opinion, it doesn't get much easier, higher protein or better than that. But real quick, let's go over the macros for this meal. So for the chicken bacon ranch sandwich, as is, 11 grams of fat, 24 grams of carbs, 44 grams of protein, and 371 calories. 
So once again, a lower calorie meal, very high in protein. That's the kind of theme of the day. I just saved most of my fats for later in the day. On a 1600 calorie diet, I personally recommend saving most of your calories for the end of the day. So have two high protein meals, have some snacks in there. We're gonna have some fruit, we're gonna have some Greek yogurts, and then a KFC Famous Bowl for dinner. Without further ado, I'm gonna dig into this. I'll probably see you guys at quick snack time. It has been about an hour, hour and a half. Okay, actually now that the clock, about an hour, 45 minutes since we had our lunch, that chicken bacon ranch sandwich. One thing I recommend for anyone on a cut trying to lose weight, have fruits and vegetables on hand at all times because it's a great low calorie snack. Sorry, Macy's licking me right now. But as you see, we have a plethora of fruit options. I did pronounce that right. I normally mess it up. Plethora, plethora, plethora. But we have some oranges, we have apples, um, we have avocado, tomato, pear, and bananas. Personally, out of these, I do like oranges, but I'm not feeling one right now. So we're gonna go with an apple um, and a banana as well. So we just. And although, yes, this is not technically a recipe in the cookbook, no, you will not find eat an apple, eat a banana in the actual cookbook itself, I highly recommend adding little things like snacks along the way to complement your meals or the recipes in the cookbook. But adding fruits and vegetables into recipes, um, either in the actual recipe or on the side, is a great way to increase the overall volume as well as make sure we're eating plenty of high volume, low calorie foods like fruits and vegetables. I would say the top probably 20 or 30 foods I can think of, I mean, Watermelons, cantaloupe, uh, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, apples, bananas, oranges, pears, asparagus, peppers, onions, tomatoes, carrots, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli. The top 30 lowest calorie, highest volume foods are all fruits and vegetables. So highly recommend getting those in. But without further ado, the apple and banana, it's two grams of fat, 42 grams of carbs, and zero grams of protein. Once again, this is more of a filler, a snack. And during a fat loss phase, I definitely like to aim for about two to four servings of fruits and vegetables per day. If you are struggling with your current diet and you don't have at least four servings of fruits and vegetables, like you're feeling hungry, go ahead, add more fruits in, add more vegetables in, see if the volume helps. So we're still eating the same amount of calories, but we're eating more food by using fruits and vegetables. Without further ado, I'm gonna have these. See you guys at dinner. It is now time for dinner and we're gonna make a KFC Famous Bowl. So I actually have made this on the channel before. If you want the full in-depth like how to cook everything, go ahead and watch that video. I believe it's the um, famous, or shoot, I think it's fast food meal prep, um, if I'm not mistaken. I think I do a um, Big Mac bowl and a KFC Famous Bowl. So go check that out for exactly how to cook everything. But I'll go over all the ingredients as well as all the steps here. I'm just not gonna film every single step meticulously like I did that other video to save you guys time and show you guys just a full day of eating 1600 calories and that'll kind of be like the cooking part of it. But without further ado, we have the KFC Famous Bowl. Once again, the recipe card is directly off the cookbook. Now available, link in the description. The ingredients are one and a half pounds of chicken breast, 16 ounces of mashed potatoes, instant mashed potatoes right here. We use 48 grams of brown gravy mix. Depending on the pack size, you might need two of those. We're also gonna do um, a can of corn. This is, let's see, this is a can of corn. It's a 15 ounce can of corn, which also is about 432 grams. We're also gonna need 168 grams of reduced fat shredded cheese. That's actually in the fridge still. I do need to get that out. We also need half a tablespoon of garlic powder, half a tablespoon of onion powder, half a tablespoon of paprika, half a tablespoon of salt, and half a tablespoon of pepper, along with one tablespoon of light brown sugar. I'll show you guys this specifically. This is the Swerve sugar replacement. So you could go a light brown sugar or a sugar replacement, either one works. And then I'll go ahead and read off the instructions for you guys. Like I said, I'm not gonna film everything, but I'll definitely let you guys know. So basically the instant mashed potatoes and the gravy, you're just gonna follow the package instructions. So for example, the gravy here has the instructions, as you can see right there. They might vary depending on your gravy mix, but instant mashed potatoes, pretty much just gonna boil water, pour the mashed potatoes in. Instant gravy, you're just gonna basically mix the gravy in some cold water, put it over a pan and heat it up. Then we'll go ahead and basically dice our chicken, our one and a half pounds of chicken breast right here, dice it into cubes, mix it with all of our seasonings and our sugar, our light brown sugar or sugar replacement, and then go ahead and cook that on a hot pan over I would say medium, medium high heat on the stove for about eight to 10 minutes, flip halfway, mix it up till everything gets cooked all the way through to 165 degrees internally. And then once everything's cooked, you have your mashed potatoes, your gravy, and your chicken cooked, it comes time to assemble. And then everything you see here comes out to make six different servings. Obviously, you can change the serving size to four servings, five servings, have more calories, or even eight servings if you wanna drop the calories down. And at the very end, I, I leave a quick tip. If you want to reduce the overall carbs of the meal, reduce the amount of instant mashed potatoes used. If you want to increase or decrease the protein, um, you can maybe use one pound of chicken or two pounds of chicken to increase or decrease the protein as well. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and make this. As I mentioned, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that, magic of YouTube, magic of editing, show you guys the final product and go over the macros as well. 
And here we have it, the final product, the KFC Famous Bowl. Like I mentioned, this does make six servings. You can go ahead and make more or less depending on your macros. I want you guys to take my recipes and make them your own. I obviously, you can copy them directly. You get the same macros I do, but sometimes my macros and other person's macros won't fit what works best for you. So make sure you can kind of tweak these recipes as you see fit, reduce some of the chicken, reduce some of the cheese, reduce whatever you need to, to have it fit your macros. And even add ingredients in if you want to have more vegetables. And without actually tasting vegetables, I would recommend adding some broccoli or something into this, along with the corn. It's a really easy way to add more vegetables without even thinking about it and already have it in a meal. But without further ado, the macros for this meal come out to be 14 grams of fat, 65 grams of carbs, 39 grams of protein, and 542 calories in total. But now I'm gonna go ahead and dig into the rest of this meal. I do have one more kind of snack slash meal left. It's not an actual recipe, but it's a great way to cap off your day with some protein and some sweetness. So I'll see you guys there. It is time to finish off this full day of eating 1600 calories with two Greek yogurts. As you see right here, these are the, hopefully you guys zoom in, the Danon Light and Fit Greek yogurts. These are the peach flavor, as well as 50 grams of blueberries. Um, these have 12 grams of protein each for only 80 calories. No, this is not a recipe from the cookbook. Um, it's just a snack that I absolutely love. I personally have a really big sweet tooth, so I like to save something like Greek yogurt, maybe a little bit of honey and some fruit at the end of the day. Personally, for me right now, pineapple, for whatever reason, is being my favorite fruit. So I always have to have some sort of fruit at the end of the day, help me curb my sweet tooth before I go to bed. But real quick, I'll read off the macros for this meal. So for two Greek yogurts and then 50 grams of blueberries, it comes out to be zero grams of fat, 30 grams of carbs and 25 grams of protein. And that brings the day total to 31 grams of fat, 171 grams of carbs, 162 grams of protein, and then 1,611 calories. And as you guys saw today, we used three different recipes from the cookbook, as well as a few snacks here and there, primarily the high volume, low calorie foods like fruits and vegetables. But overall, a very good full day of eating. But the biggest thing I want you guys to take away from this video is you can make eating low calorie, high volume amounts of food. So although you are eating less calories, you can still eat a big amount of food. As you guys saw those egg white bites in the morning, I mean, that's like a full plate and a half. Like I just stacked those egg whites on top of each other on an already big plate. So there are meals like that where you can increase the amount of volume you have for less calories and still hit your protein goal. As I mentioned, the cookbook is live. It'll be the first link in the description below. It's been about eight months, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I guess not so many tears, but more so just a lot of experimentation in the kitchen. But I'm super happy to share it with you guys and hope you guys enjoy as much as I have. Without further ado, I'll leave you here. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. See you guys next time. Peace.